Okay, we're live. Woohoo! Hey. Hey. It's like nerve wracking and exciting all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we can see and hear you, but can't talk. That's what I'm saying. That's because you've got it as a webinar, right? And not a yeah, meeting? It as a webinar, not a meeting. Lane's so, what, so the because that's, that's Lainey's mom. She's going to be watching us. So when you guys have questions, just type it into the, into the direct chat and then I will let Jen know, Lainey, because um, for some reason, because the way I have it set up, you guys won't be able to make, um, to talk. You'll just yeah, be able to um, chat. Yeah. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm here with, uh, well, first of all, my name is Jamie and this is Miss Lily. And um, I'm with the Chamber of Commerce here in with Lake Villa Lindenhurst in the Round Lake Area Chamber. And we're here tonight with Jennifer Evans from Periwinkle Art Studio. And Miss Jennifer is going to be teaching us um, some snowman building techniques with some acrylic paint. So I will let you do a quick inter introduction, Jennifer, and we'll get started. Okay, great. Thanks for having me. I am a mixed media artist. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples. Um, when I flip the camera around and put, uh, put it on the tripod so that you can see my work surface, um, I'm going to show you ways that you can personalize your snowman and make it mixed media, meaning more than one medium. So if you add something to the acrylic paint that we're going to use to dress it up, um, I'm going to show you ways that you can do that and continue to have fun and paint snowman all throughout the season. So most of my classes nowadays are on Zoom and that is either listed on my website, periwinkleartstudio.com or on my Facebook page. But if you go to my website and sign up for my email list, you'll get a free downloadable five by seven floral from me. So go ahead and do that if you're interested in studio news and classes that are coming up and um, we'll kind of talk you through the steps. If you have any questions or I'm going too fast or something weird happens like I move something out of view of the camera, um, type that in the chat so Jamie can let me know and um, we can go ahead. I'd rather that you ask questions as we're going along in painting um, because I, I can't um, listen once my phone is on the tripod I won't be able to listen for comments it'll have to come through the chat and then Jamie will read them to me but I'd rather that you ask them as you think of them instead of waiting till the end so um, give me just a minute and we'll go ahead and get set up and I'll get my lighting right and we'll start to paint Okay, so hopefully everyone has their materials ready. I am going to use this as my sample. This is an eight by 10 panel, so it's, it's flat, but you can use canvas. Tonight, what I'm going to use, uh, just because it's very easily accessible, I'm gonna use some watercolor paper, which is a heavy weight. This is um, nine by 12 paper, even though it says it's for watercolor, I'm going to use it. You could also use um, cardboard. You could even use the inside of a cereal box if you wanted. Just anything handy. The point here is to just use what you have readily available and uh, have fun with this project. So if you take a look at my sample, this actually is a doily for the body. That's what ma would make something like this a mixed media project. Um, and this is another example. You get to decide whether you want your snowman to be uh, two snowballs or three or four or whatever you want. That's, that's your decision as the artist. And this one has a doily for the bottom. And then this is a piece of like ledger paper and I don't even know what that was because I painted over it. But if you notice on the hat brim, it's got some uh, rickrack or some ribbon. And that's another way that you can dress up your snowman with the scarf or the hat band and give it some personality. And you would attach something like that with either Mod Podge, which is a decoupage medium, 
or something like this, which is a gel medium or matte medium. And you just, something like this, you just put it on with a brush, you paint it on the canvas and then stick in place your doily or ribbon or whatever you would like to um, dress up your snowman with. Here's one more example. This is on a wood board. And this is actually using a stencil that I designed for Stencil Girl products. It's on their website, but it's a six by six stencil that has the snowman as well as the little phrase there. So something like that using a stencil allows you to make multiples of something if you were doing gifts. And this one actually does have some, an old book page that's um, collaged in there for the body. And if you're watching my Facebook page, every day this week, I'm going to be talking about glimpses of things um, for the holidays since we're kind of in the home stretch um, for these are ornaments that I did with snowmen. And it has a little phrase on there. And these are great because you can use them as gift tags. You can use a Sharpie marker to write on the back and use it as a package gift tag or hang it around the, the neck of a bottle of wine but I'm just giving you all kinds of different ways that you can uh, modify your snowman and give it a lot of personality. So I'm gonna start with, I have my paint all ready to go here on my palette paper. And I'm gonna start with this light blue and I'm just gonna give it a good coat. I'm gonna just um, do a background. Make sure I don't have two pages, uh, two pieces of watercolor paper here. And because it is uh, paper and not canvas, it is going to soak up this acrylic paint really quickly, I feel like. I'm just going to rough paint to the edges. And I can trim it down if I want a straight edge later on. But for now, I'm just going to paint within, I don't know, a half inch from the edge just so I don't end up painting my table and my fingers and everything else. This is when a really wide flat brush like I'm using comes in handy. If you are painting on canvas, you just want really good coverage. And sometimes if I paint my canvas just too thick um, and I can't layer on a top coat like my snowman, sometimes I'll go grab a hair dryer or something to dry the paint. Or if you're like sitting near a heater or something like that, your heat's on in your house, it might dry in no time anyway. Okay. So that's my blue background, but really you could do any background you want. Um, I'm just kind of mimicking sky but you could do purple, you could do pink, whatever you would like. And I'm gonna just rinse my brush real quick and blot it on paper towel. I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue to use this brush or switch to a round brush. We'll have to see, we'll wait in just a minute. Okay, now we're gonna start to build our snowman. And a really easy way to do this is to grab something round that you might have in your space. It might be a jar lid. This is one of my water containers. And if I put it down, I am going to create, I'm going to draw a little bit bigger around the um, opening of my water jug for the bottom snowman um, body. And I actually just have a white china marker. You could do this with white paint on your brush. You could do this with chalk. You do this with pencil. 
all we're doing is just getting the round shape without freehanding a circle and worrying about if it's gonna turn out well. So I have this probably kind of hard to see on camera, but other things you could use, I mean, you might have a solo cup, you might have something like a roll of tape where you could draw a circle on the inside and on the outside and you've got two different um, circles there for you. So I'm gonna use this for my snowman head and here's the top of the body. I'm gonna overlap it like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, just so it looks like it's actually on the body. So it doesn't look like it's teeter tottering there. So I have my shapes here. So don't feel bad about tracing something. If you have a jar lid or something you can trace, that makes easy work of this. And you can, I'm all for finding efficiencies. You can take a look at what you've got in your area and go with that. So now I'm gonna use my white paint to paint my um, snowman body and head. And I'm gonna go ahead and rough this in. And while the body's drying, I'm gonna talk to you about how we're gonna give the background some texture. Now, if you're doing something like you wanna paste in a doily for the body here, um, you don't have to paint it. You could just glue the doily down. And if you wanted to fill it in with some paint like I did here, you certainly could. Um, but if you're gonna, if you are looking for more of a mixed media look for your snowman, uh, you could go ahead and glue that down now. And yes, when I'm doing something symmetrical, I always turn my canvas or turn my substrate so that I can see that it's round. I like to turn it and see, well, is it too wonky on one side or even though I traced it, <laughs> sometimes I get to talking and I paint too fast and I'll get a wonky circle, something that's kind of off balance. How are we doing, Lily? Good. Good. Yep, we're, we're filling in our snowman. Okay. It's not gonna look like much right now, but hang with me. We'll get there. It's like a lighter. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to flip it around to do the other side here. And then we're going to give this a little bit of drying time. Now I have done so many snowmen over the last couple of years. And I really do like to give them their own personality. So you'll notice that some I'll leave kind of bald without a hat. Some I'll put that um, big black hat on, like the traditional, when we think of Frosty the Snowman, the character in the storybook or from the song, you know, then we, we think of that hat. What's it called? I forget the lyrics now. Anyway, if somebody thinks of it, let me know. All right. Now, while this, while the white paint is drying, I'm going to show you how to give your backgrounds a little bit of visual texture. This is totally not necessary, and you could just take your paintbrush and kind of, you know, paint something in. These are 
not perfect by any means, but what they are, are these rubber stamps. I have some rubber stamps that I use just for visual texture and two of them happen to be snowflakes and one is just kind of a swirly pattern, uh, just kind of an ornament, uh, ornamental decoration. So what I'm gonna do is take a darker color blue just so it stands out and I'm gonna paint it on my rubber stamp. And um, if you have rubber stamps that you used to craft with, um, you're gonna to wanna to clean these after you put acrylic paint on them because they tend to kind of get gummed up after a while and it, you'll have a hard time using them you know, with your ink pad again. But I, <laughs> I have these old rubber stamps that I kind of just have set aside in a bin for my mixed media projects. And I don't really care that they're, have kind of um, seen better days because I really only intend to use these with my acrylic paint. So that's one way just to give kind of that blustery effect. And what I usually do in my studio is I have some wipes, um, either baby wipes or these are uh, regular, just soft cloth wipes. I always have these handy because I'm usually doing something that requires me to say oops. Um, but in this case, I'm going to just grab one and clean my rubber stamp just so that um, it doesn't continue to get all caked with acrylic paint and become so hard it never never actually works for me at all. So there's that. Um, let's go ahead and just for something different, I'm going to try this one. This, this stamp is a little bit more intricate, so I don't know that it's going to stamp all that perfectly, but oops, I didn't even get enough paint on that one. Didn't I just say I say oops a lot? I tend to, but that's okay. And if you're doing this on canvas, you could do this with stencils as well. I, I you do a lot of things with stencils. Um, this just kind of gives the background a little bit of visual texture, but if you're doing this on canvas, the canvas might give a little bit. It might be a little bit harder to get a perfect um, snowflake impression, but perfectionism is overrated, believe me. It just gives it some personality and some background texture. Alrighty, let's go ahead and move on. The first thing that I usually do to put features into my snowman is I usually start with the nose. And it does not matter which way you have the nose pointing. It can point left, right, slightly up, slightly down, however you want to do it. But I'm going to grab a smaller paintbrush and some orange paint. And what I usually do is start right smack dab in the middle of the head of the snowman. And I put my brush right down there to start. And I'm gonna go right, off to the right. So as I pull the paintbrush out to decide how long I want that nose, the carrot nose to be, I'm just gonna ease up on the pressure as I'm painting that direction. So it's going to be a little bit thicker where the carrot goes into the face there and get thinner. And again, if you have to turn your piece to get at the angle that you need to, don't be afraid to do that. So the carrot can be as long or as short, as skinny or as thick as you want it to be. And then once you have the nose in, then it's really uh, a lot easier to figure out the placement of the eyes and the mouth. So 
This is where if you uh, are feeling a little unsure about using paint, you could switch over to something like a Sharpie marker or a paint marker. Um, if you are feeling like you're not going to do a good job with a brush. But the good news is when you're doing a snowman, the eyes are made of coal, right? So they don't have to be perfect circles and actually they look better. They have a little bit more personality if it's actually kind of a, a blobby circle. It's not perfectly round. It's got a chunkiness to that, to the eyes. So there we have two eyes. And for the mouth, there's two ways that I do the mouth. The mouth can either be starting here underneath the nose and have them be smaller chunks of coal. The other way I like to do the mouth is give them kind of like, I call this my Charlie Brown mouth where he's kind of like, I don't know, kind of a wavy, <laughs> a wavy, uh, mouth, but this time I'll just go ahead and do just the regular coal, just to be consistent. Start with the bigger one toward the bottom there. And then just kind of have them come up in a half circle and get smaller, graduate them in size. And this one over here is going to be kind of behind the nose anyway. So it's going to be set back a little bit. Okay, and then the hat, if you want to put in a hat, you don't have to, but I always start this with the hat brim and it usually comes across like that. So we make a horizontal line that comes down the forehead a little bit like that. And that's the brim of the hat. And then we're gonna go straight up where the line and the top of the head meet. So on either side here, you're gonna decide how tall you want the hat and you're gonna make two lines that come up. And then square off the hat, put the top of the hat in. I'm gonna fill all that in, paint over the top of his head. And we can add the hat brim once this is dry once it dries a little bit. So I'm gonna turn this around and make sure I've got a good shape to my hat. And let's pause here. Well, let's finish. I'll give you a little tip to finishing the hat here. If it's looking a little skinny, just add a little bit of a, um, a shape here to connect, kind of round off your hat. And then what I like to do is come around the back of the head just a little bit, just dip it down a little bit and draw like a little triangle in there. And that just kind of makes it look like the hat is actually like he's wearing the hat, it's actually on his head. It's wrapping around a little bit. So I will pause here and check in and see if anybody has any comments, questions, any, anybody put anything in the chat? I don't see anything. We're all good, we're hanging in there. Let me check Facebook. Nope, I don't see anything on Facebook. Okay. All right. And then 
Next, we're going to put in the scarf. So that can be any color you want. You can do a red scarf, green, purple. You can even grab some ribbon or some fabric and help you do the scarf. But I'm going to I'm going to know that that scarf is going to go in there. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add some buttons while I've got some um, black on my paintbrush. Just going to add a couple of coal buttons here. Okay. Let's see, what color should we make the scarf? I didn't even think about that. Well, you can make it red. Okay. I've got red handy. So we'll just go with the red. Or it can be kind of like stripes, red and green. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Okay, let me get my brush blotted here. Ooh. See, that's why I wear an apron because inevitably I drop something, drop a paintbrush and suddenly everything turns into painting clothes. <laughs> okay. All right, I've got my red. And what we need to do here is where the two um, snowballs are joined together. I just put down some brush strokes and I kind of just make these little vertical marks all the way across where the head and the body connect. And that's kind of where the scarf is wrapped around. And then usually there's um, a tail of the scarf. So if it's tied or knotted at the neck, usually you'll have these kind of trailers, the sides of the scarf that will kind of trail down. And you can make the ends look frayed or wispy. You make one look shorter than the other. You could even make it look like the wind took it and it's flying over there. You can really have fun with this. Sometimes I've even done bow ties, not a traditional scarf like this, but more of like a bow tie look for a very festive snowman in a tux. That's always fun. And this poor guy needs some arms. So we need just a little bit of brown, not too much. And again, this is one of those decisions just like you make with the, um, the carrot nose, how long or how short to make the nose. You have the same kind of decision, how long or how short to make the arms. Um, do we want like this, this guy I had kind of off to the side. So only one arm is in view and not even the whole arm. But on this one, he's got shorter arms and he's turned a little bit, so one's off to the side. This guy has shorter arms, but you do kind of see the end of the, the tree branches there. So let's go ahead and I like to bring them in into the body just a little bit, just so that it looks like it's actually stuck into the snow. And you can add, you know, more of a branch look. You can kind of finger out some branches. And then over here, 
again, I'm going to turn turn my guy upside down. So I'm right handed. So I'm I'm manipulating this so I can still paint in the direction that feels the most comfortable to me without having to contort my arm or do anything like that. Okay, now finishing touches. And this is where I really get excited because these finishing touches are kind of what make our snowman come to life. That's what makes, gives each one its personality. So one of the things that I like to do is not on everyone, but Sometimes I will take my red paint and add a lot of water to it. So it's kind of like a watercolor um, consistency, very watery. And I'll give my snowman some rosy cheeks. Cause you know, when we're outside playing in the snow, we get rosy cheeks. So if you make it really nice and watery, you can move it around and just when it dries, it'll just be a hint. It won't be like totally pink circles on his face, but just a little hint. Some rosy cheeks there. Oops, my, um, my coal wasn't quite dry there. So I ended up blurring that a little bit. So be sure that um, if you're going to go into other paint colors and they're going to touch each other, that you're not going to um, smear anything. But it is acrylic paint. So if you do end up smearing, that's OK. Just let it dry and do another coat. OK, now. I can go to a smaller detail brush, or if I can find one, or I can switch over to um, like a fine um, marker, fine point Sharpie or something like that. I'm not finding a really um, detail brush. So I'm gonna wing it with this one. <laughs> We're gonna see how this goes. Okay. Now, if you notice, if you look at the face of your snowman, it might kind of seem like those eyes look kind of cavernous, like, like a Halloween ghost or something like that. Um, and what I like to do to avoid that is just put in a little bit of white, a little shiner in each eye, just a little glimmer. And that helps give it a little bit of dimension. And if you wanted to, you could also add, take some white and add some um, snow to the top of the nose and also the top of the hat brim. So you can make it look like some snow fell on his hat. Oh, I forgot to put in the hat brim. I'm gonna do that. Um, what color should we do the hat? Well, you know what, to make it easy, I'm just going to make it red because that's what I've got here, but I might, um, you know, jazz this up a little bit. You could do a stripe or, you know, even if you had a little bit of plaid um, fabric or pattern scrapbook paper that would work for your hat brim as well. You could glue that on. See, now I feel like some of the personality is coming through. We're giving them some, 
some depth. And of course, what would it be without eyebrows? So I'm gonna to try to put these in with this brush, but my brush is a little bit larger than what I would like. The eyebrows are something where, you, you know, he can look, the eyebrows make a difference if he's looking happy, sad, curious. But I kind of feel like it's not a face without the eyebrows. Sometimes the eyebrows look bushier. It all depends on where you give it the arch and it might take you a little bit of practice to find an expression that you like. Again, it's acrylic paint, so you can, um, if you don't like it, you can wait for it to dry and then simply paint over it and start again. What else? Um, usually, I'll think about features that a face might have and sometimes there's dimples or a cleft chin. Sometimes I put that in. And if he's just looking too stark, you can uh, take your detail brush and just outline some of the features. So I can outline some of the carrot around the bottom, give it a shadow, give it some ridges. And also kind of give, give the snowman face and body some shadow. And if the, if the black is just too harsh, just water it down a little bit. That's what I did. So I'm getting more of a gray, less of a harsh black. I can put some, some folds into the scarf here. Ooh, what did I do? I got a big splotch of water right there. Just anywhere you think there would be a shadow, just kind of paint in a few. I smudged my snowman right there. So I'm just gonna fix that. All right, how's everybody doing? We are doing good. Yep. How about our painters on the on the webinar? Anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions. We have Colette and Lamy and Melissa and Sharon. Do you guys have any questions? You can add it to the chat. Yeah, and let me know, is this the first time you're painting a snowman in acrylic or are you just looking for something to do tonight or looking to paint a gift for somebody or just entertaining yourself, let me know what's going on. So I know that there's, there's people participating. That's always helpful to know. <laughs> well, they're still here. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. That is fun. <laughs> Nobody's left yet. I haven't offended anybody. <laughs> Sharon says it was fun to do, but the directions were a little fast. Okay. Melissa says she's good. She did this class last year at Aqua. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she's that having fun doing it again. 
Okay, so yes, I do tend to paint fast and loose. So um, I told Jamie that when we were just got on. So luckily, this is on Facebook, so you can rewatch it, right? Yes, it's yep. Facebook Live, so it should be recorded and it will live there on the, the Chamber's Facebook page. And as well as it will, once it's fully you processed, I, I, it will be on uh, the Chamber website as well. So you can pause it whenever you need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can paint another. Just start the video again and paint another or pick it up where you left off or needed a little bit more painting time. And I guess, I mean, the really, honestly, the reason that I paint fast is I, I don't take a lot of time to agonize over what I'm doing. So that's part of it. Like, I don't want to get caught up in Oh, is my snowman completely round? I just don't, I don't find that useful to get caught up in the perfection of it. I find that um, just a looser style that you get just by going with the flow is more my style. But I know that um, that's only because I've painted a lot. <laughs> I've painted so many snowmen, as you can tell from the, the samples that I showed um, that's only just a small fraction of the number of snowmen I've painted over the last mm, eight years, nine years. So um, part of it just comes with knowing your subject matter and just kind of diving in and going for it. And um, part of it is just, you know, I um, I do work fast. I don't like to really agonize over everything. And because it's acrylic, it's opaque, and I can always um, adjust anything tomorrow after everything's completely dried and I want to um, make any adjustments. And, you know, sometimes this is still wet. I would not do this now, but sometimes I will come in with um, a fine marker and just add some sketchy lines in there uh, that I couldn't get, you know, a finer touch than than I could get with a brush. So sometimes it's good to just give it a little bit of drying time and then decide next time when you come back what it needs. This one I actually spattered on so it looks like snow. So let me show you how to do that uh, because I have some white paint left on my palette. So I'm going to really water up my brush and again, get this worked into the consistency of like a watercolor or a whitewash. And I'm going to load that up. Get really puddly. Load my brush up with that white or light blue or whatever color, gray. And then make sure nothing's in the way that you're going to spatter on. And I usually put my finger down and I whack the brush on my finger so that the spatter goes in the direction I'm hitting the, with the action. So it goes that direction and not in my face. So don't do this, do this. <laughs> Hit your finger. And you know you can have a um, paper towel handy. So if you get some spatters somewhere where they just shouldn't, shouldn't be like, I don't know, right in the middle of the eye or something gets a little bit too overpowering you can take your um, paper towel and just pull some of that up. But that gives you a nice spatter. You can also do it with an old toothbrush. I know people do that. Um, if they've got an old toothbrush laying around, you could just kind of flick it with your thumb. Um, but, you know, why use another tool if you've got, got one already handy? So, you know, I could just use, use my brush and um, be good to go. Did you have anything coming up, Jen? Any classes or anything? I do have a class coming up on Thursday evening, and that's going to be my last one of the year, um, unless somebody wants to do like a small group 
like a family paint session, family or friends. And the nice thing about doing this on Zoom, usually I set mine up as a meeting so that we can have a little show and tell at the end. And I can, you know, uh, everybody can see everybody else's work. And um, I can answer any questions. Um, so if you want to do uh, uh, something like that over Zoom, the nice thing about that is people can join in that are in different time zones. So if you have family across the country and you all want to get together and paint something, we can do that. I just need a minimum of three participants to schedule that, and that can be done just by contacting me. But um, the class that we're doing Thursday evening that's on my website is an angels class, and these angels are done using a stencil. Again, one of my stencils that I created for Stencil Girl, um, there's two of them. There, one's called Faces in the Crowd, which is a six by six stencil with nine faces on it. <laughs> so you can use one of the faces to create the basic um, face for the angels we're gonna be painting. Um, or the other one is an, on an ATC stencil that's a nine by 12. And that one's a little bit bigger of a face. Um, so if you have the stencil and want to join the class, that's gonna be Thursday. Um, and other than that, I will have things listed in the new year. I'm thinking I might do some abstracts. Um, of course, I do a lot of florals because I'm just naturally drawn to that as a subject matter. So we'll be doing always, there's, there's usually some watercolor florals thrown in there. But um, if anybody has any questions or wants to do something that's around a specific technique or using um, a specific medium, like this is done in watercolor, we use acrylic tonight. Even collage, we do collage class. Uh, just get in touch and we can talk about how to do a class around what you're interested in. Awesome. And what is your website, Jen? Uh, www.periwinkleartstudio.com. Same thing for my Facebook page. If you search Periwinkle Art Studio, um, that's on Facebook. I do have, <coughs> excuse me, I do have a, a monthly membership that's $10 a month, um, and that's on Patreon. Uh, if you don't know anything about Patreon, that's a wonderful site for supporting artists. And um, for your $10 a month membership, you get a video tutorial every month from me on uh, an art technique. This month for the month of December, it's um, some holiday greeting cards. Let's see if I have one. Oh, this was the project holiday greeting cards with watercolor. It's a little technique video. You get that. You get a monthly color palette to play with. You get a monthly art journaling prompt and a month load, a monthly five by seven high resolution downloadable art from me, which you can print out and use as greeting cards or use however you'd like. So if you want information about Patreon, uh, you can send me a message through my Facebook page and I can give you the link to that. And that's a way to just do something fun and treat yourself every month. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Jen. It was fun. My pleasure. I really had fun, right, Lobel? Yep. yep. We should ask um, once you, uh, depending on how this is set up on Facebook, anybody who wants to share their finished snowman, take a little picture and post it on the under the Facebook um, thread. I would love. I always love to see. I kind of miss out on the end when we do show and tell to see how everybody's. Uh, turned out. So I would just love that. If you want to share on Facebook, everybody that participated, that would be wonderful. That would be awesome. Tag it's, me uh, Jennifer Evans or tag Periwinkle Art Studio or even put it on my page. I'd love that too. I love when people post uh, art that they've done. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Jen. Have a fabulous holiday. You too. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. I had fun and we will see you again soon. Okay. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye guys.